everybody, it's time to LOL. Listen out loud, that is. It's time for Anime Jam Session with DJ Ronma S, Mako-chan, and Ari Rockefeller. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Anime Jam Session, episode number 524. We are that podcast that talks about anime, games, conventions, the fandom, geek stuff, and everything in between. I'm DJ Ron Mess. And I am Mako-chan. And as you can see, um, Ari is outside due to he has to work. Um, I meant to put the old layout up, uh, but I asked Wild Spice at the last minute if she could join us, but she can't. So, so it's just the two of us tonight, so we'll have a pretty good show. Mm. Anywho, how is everybody doing tonight? Meh. I can kind of agree with that. Kind of, sort of, you know, maybe, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not at all, possibly, I don't know. Well, you know, I worked from home today and, you know, it kind of threw my day off, so. Mm. It didn't help the fact that, you know, I'm just there laying in bed with one eye on the TV watching anime, the other eye watching the ticket queue and for any phone calls that were to came in. So, yeah, I couldn't do that. My ass would fall asleep. That's why I had more than one cup of coffee on standby. Yep. Coffee can only do so much. Well, that is true. I think within the last few weeks, I've gone from three cups of coffee a day to about two. And I've just been drinking a lot of, like, not flavored water, but we have this machine at work where you put, it's called the Lavit machine. You put, like, this tin, basically it's a machine that makes powdered drinks. Okay. And it's either regular drinks or it can make it into sparkling water drinks. So you have, like, Mint and green tea, lemonade, Arizona iced tea, Arizona peach tea, Arizona like um, Arnold Palmer, a pink lemonade Arnold Palmer, and other stuff. So I've been drinking a lot of those. Because mm. I do enjoy my coffee, but I realize I don't think I need three cups a day, you know. Now that I brought my uh, my container... Like I brought my Johanne uh, coffee mug in, so you know that holds <laughs> more. This is what happened. Now is we were told that to use the dishes and the mugs because when I first started there, we were only allowed to use disposable plastic wares and stuff, you know, because of COVID. Mm-hmm. But since there's not that many people in the office, we were told, "Oh, use the silverware, use the plates, use the mugs." So, so I'm like, okay. Sounds good to me. Especially the fact that there's a uh, there's a um, dishwasher right there on the floor, so that's always a good thing. Yeah, there's one on each floor, so I can't complain too much. Mm. Actually, let me put this up here so I don't forget that. So let's go ahead and kick things off. Um, we are live tonight, week of November 16th, 2021, right here on Twitch TV. We're here live uh, Tuesdays from 9 to 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you can always find us here at Twitch TV slash Anime Jam Session. We're also part of the Voice of Geeks Network at VogNetwork.com. And they stream here live at uh, Twitch TV slash Vog Network. They kick things off at 8 p.m. on Sundays with the Bobby Blackwell Show, followed by Orange Lounge Radio at 9. And we have a Discord. Uh, vognetwork.com slash discord all the shows that are part of voice of geeks network has their own channel so come through hang out and have a good time so yeah and unfortunately the pool is closed but i believe the hot tub is finally open okay let's go ahead and kick things off mako chan how was your week how was your day um not bad uh yeah. this past weekend i uh went to go look at the place i was interested in mm -hmm. um and uh went you know looking for paint and crap like that because we're pretty sure i'm gonna get this place so sounds good yeah um i got a tattoo 
and it was, you know, completely out of the blue. Um, we had been speaking with uh, the tattoo artist to have something done um, between me and my two cousins mm -hmm. um, because they actually moved back. They moved to Arizona this weekend. Um, so he actually had an opening the day before they left. Mm. So we were all able to get in there and um, each one of us ended up with uh, a tattoo of the hairstyle of one of the witches from Pocus Pocus. Which, by the way, I believe they started production on part two, which is going to come out fall of next year. They did. I've seen some of the pictures. So, yeah. So now I have a tattoo um, behind my ear on my neck of Winifred's hair. And my two cousins have uh, Mary and Sarah. You... So it's, it's it's just a cute little thing um, for us. Mm. Uh, seeing as seeing as how uh, we've lived the last you know almost two years together, you know I have never seen Hocus Pocus. <gasps> really? Yeah. That needs to be changed. I know you have to understand something. I grew up kind of poor and a little sheltered, so all of the popular movies I really didn't see. A lot of the popular TV shows I watched. If it was on cable, that wasn't happening, so. Well, it is on Disney Plus, and I know you have Disney Plus. Yes, and with me working from home next week, I think things can be arranged. Yeah, I mean, we'll it's, it's a cute little, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it's very childish, but it's a cute little movie, and Bette Midler's awesome. <laughs> mm, excuse me. But also, the thing is about these movies that are on demand, You have, to, I think you have to remind me or I have to set timers. Like, I didn't even see the Sopranos movie and I really wanted to see it. So now, Yeah, I, have, I haven't seen that one yet either. So now I have to wait till it hits HBO Max for normal streaming, that, like Mortal Kombat. So. Mm. And I see the beer, he says, our pool is still open, but it's in the 60s here now. See, see the berry. Sixties in Florida is a lot nicer than sixties in New York around this time of the year. I love this time of the year. I wish it would stay, you know, in the fifties and sixties, mm -hmm. just because I love hoodie weather. Yeah. Um, but like this morning, I woke up and it was twenty some odd degrees, and really? it is currently thirty three, thirty four degrees right now. Really, I got forty four here. Yeah, I've got 34 degrees, and I mean, I I enjoy colder weather, so I actually have the window in my bedroom cracked mm -hmm. a little bit. See, when I lived up in the Bronx, the heat was came in my room so so high and so hot that I actually had the windows open, and it was still hot. I was like, okay. Um, and yeah, I can remember yeah, that. Yeah. I think I was there once or twice, mm -hmm. and it was hot as hell. Yep. And Ron before 21 says, I'm in total violation. Yes, I know. Yes, you are. Yeah. And Cedarberry says he's very well aware of the 60 degree differential and will be in Rockland next week. I would assume for Thanksgiving. Yeah, everybody's doing a little bit of traveling next week. Yeah. I already kind of figured out my travel plans. I got to call my grandmother and see what she's actually doing. So I thought you were supposed to have already done that. I forgot. I meant to do. I meant to call her to. <laughs> I meant to call her today, but I just totally forgot. Yeah, my Thanksgiving weekend is going to be spent packing. So, mm. and I'll help you whenever, as as much as I possibly can. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going crazy because I do have you know a couple of weeks, but I need to. Uh, I really need to start packing my shit. Mm. Well, at least we'll have a small army to help move stuff out, which is a good thing. Yeah, I, I was very pleasantly surprised to um, see see that many people volunteering to help me move. Mm. But yeah, once I get a closing date and all of that, I will, uh, you know, let everybody know. So y'all can come help me move and then I can feed your asses. Mmm, pizza and beer. Yeah. Alright. So and Ari says he will help uh he'll help with the with the move as well. 
awesome. As long as I don't have to touch a frig- a refrigerator, we're good. No, well, at least not moving out of my house with one. Oh boy. I just um I don't know the the place that I'm moving into. I don't know if they're leaving the fridge or not. It's not part of the contract, mm-hmm. so I doubt it. So I will eventually have to find a fridge. <laughs> Well, I can help you with that. Cuz I'll tell you this now. Straight up, just go to Best Buy. They will they will send stuff for free, you know? Cuz I you've seen my little fridge. It's 300 and fi- it was $350 and they took the old one out. The only thing I had to do was take the fucking doors off the hinges. <laughs> I'm just sitting I'm just standing doing this like this is some bullshit. Because of the fact that the frame is so it's not small enough for that, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Now I'm actually looking on a uh, Facebook Marketplace at this point. Mm. I mean, you can catch a good deal here and there. I'll, I'll I'll even keep I'll I'll keep tabs and let you know. But um, as for my weekend day, it's it's just been work. And today, like I mentioned before, I I worked from home today. They're putting in rotation. Everybody's going to work from home at least one day a week, which for me is great because right now I have my therapy sessions at work. Mm-hmm. But um, here's the thing. They turn all the conference rooms into Zoom rooms. So basically, you know, you use Zoom. So I would grab one of the conference rooms and just do my session in there. So also on the plus side i can go also go to the gym with my physical trainer because i went to i went to the gym today and i just come out of it i'm like damn that was a good workout because i wasn't as tired or exhausted or as sore as i was but it was still good so you know so mm-hmm. that was fine you know um i didn't do my traditional wings because what happened was on my lunch break, I went to go to the doctor to drop off a specimen. You know, they wanted to double check for the acid reflux. So I'm on a medication for that, which is over the counter. So I'm getting older before my time. But um, I did that and I figured, let me I feel while I'm out, I'll grab a sandwich and come home. For some reason, my stomach wasn't feeling a sandwich, so I'm like, you know what? I'll order ramen and some seaweed salad. That showed up late, so that kind of threw off my entire food pattern for today. So I had made on, I think, last Thursday, I made a big old pot of pasta and sausage with spinach and mozzarella cheese, which is really good. I have a lot of that left over, so I've been, I ate some of that. So I figured tomorrow with Borderlands, I will pick up some... Uh, some banchan wings on the way home or something like that. Mm. Mm. But um, I had my one-on-one with my manager today, and it's more like not an improvement session of, but it's more like, what do you want to do? Where do you see yourself with the company? And you know, and as y'all, as all of y'all know, I've spent the bulk of my IT career doing either. Uh, break fix repairs or image uh, PC deployments. I want to do more of the behind the scenes of the deployments, like help put the image together, help set up the software and stuff like that. So we're seeing where that goes. But other than that, that's been my weekend day. Oh, and I had to buy a friggin' network switch for my new router. <laughs> Let me tell you. Maka, you know that that little that little router that you have that you have. Mm-hmm. The Verizon replaced it with this with this big boy, this big white router. And I didn't realize how big this sucker was till I put it up. Normally it's the old router and I have a stack of my video games there. I have to move my video games and then I realize this router, you probably seen it when we were hanging out at Michelle's house. This router has like this blinding white ring light and i'm like yeah I, this ain't gonna work for me i'm used <laughs> to like like smaller colors and lights not, nothing that big so i moved that router behind the tv i went out and got a switch and ran the cable so now that's even better and the best part is i now have three extra ports if i need them but i seriously think that i will but 
Anywho. Oh, what in the world here? Huh, well, at least it did that. There we go. Let's get into some housekeeping. Um, This, okay. Don't forget every episode of Anime Jam Session is available on YouTube. Episodes going back at the beginning of this year is available at youtube.com slash anime jam session. There's a playlist called Podcast VODs. Definitely check them out there. Uh, don't forget to check out the Vogue Network Pro Shop at vognetwork.com slash shop. Cool shirts to help support the Voice of Geeks Network. You should buy a shirt. You should definitely buy a shirt. And upcoming conventions. Our last con of 2021 is Anime NYC, which is this weekend. Uh, me and La Chocola will be covering that. I will be there on Saturday. So Saturday and Sunday because I'm working Friday and I'm just like, well, I really didn't want to take the day, the day off. So no harm, no foul. And don't forget Zenkai Con in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, March 25th to the 22nd, 2022. All right. And to ask, uh, as Ron 421 says, the Fios router. Yes. Verizon has a newer router that's thick, stumpy, and white. And it takes up a lot of space. If you look up Verizon Fios router white, you'll see exactly what I mean. And I did not realize how much space that sucker took. Even though it says it has better Wi-Fi enabled on there, I'm just not using it right now, so it's whatever. Okay. Next up is a Geek Roundtable. This is the part of the show where we talk more about our geekier aspects of the week. So, um, take it away, Mako-chan and Deadpool. Uh, yeah, so, um, as I said, I've been packing, so as I go through all of my crap, you guys get to see all of my crap. Mm. So, here is my maid pool. <laughs> and that's that's basically all I can say about that. He's, <laughs> he's wearing his traditional belt and uh, gun clips and everything. Um, but yeah, so, maid pool. <laughs> all right so as you can see i am not wearing a geek shirt tonight because this is basically what i wore working from home i'm just like and coming back from the gym and all i just didn't feel like it you know putting on a geek shirt or something but i have started watching uh the quintessential quintuplets a friend of mine was telling me about the about the anime, and she said that she really didn't like it. So I had started it. I figured, let me jump right back on there. And it's like, okay, this is good. This is good, and I'm really I'm really enjoying that anime right now. I watched another episode of Squid Game. I'm just like, good lord almighty. Um. That's basically has been my uh my my geek aspects of the week, you know. So, and as Ari Rockefeller says, maids may need guns. Yeah, there's May Rin. She is a maid with guns. Mm-hmm. And Ron before twenty one is telling us that Spectrum Internet is in Tennessee is crappy. How bad is it? That's what I want to know. But um, now that we got that out the way, we're going to get into tonight's topics. And we have a lot of stuff to kind of cover. So me and Mako are just going to go back and forth for the most part. But, uh, but for right now, it seems that we have some updates when it comes to anime and live action stuff. And there has been talk of... Live action uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, and people have been kind of happy about it. Some people have been angry about it. But either or, the new the live action series will hit Netflix December of 2023. So, I think this is going is going to be really good. There's not much information about the series right now, except that uh, Teru Mori is producing the series. So, so I think that- I think if they do it right, it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. But the question is, will it be an all Japanese cast? That's what I'm curious about. 
I can kind of see Hiei and Kurama as non-Japanese because they're spirits, you know? That I could see. Well, Kurama is technically a spirit in a baby that grew up human. Right. So while Hiei might not be Japanese, Kurama would be. Okay, I can see that. But I know the demons from the uh, uh, from the competition. They were all different nationalities. Oh, okay. So that may be where they pull stuff in from. That would be good. I just as long as they don't pull a death note and you know base it out of the United States when it has no need to be based out of the United States. They it, they could have done it right. That could have been like its own little parallel universe if they did it well. Yeah. Yeah. But as we've said, the the next live action Death Note movie is supposed to fix a lot of that. That's just now a wait and see type moment. And Ari wants to know how will they properly sell Quabra's Pompadour CGI? No, dude, that's going to be a wig. I'm telling you that shit right now. It's going to be a wig or that person's actual hair. Because greasers are a thing in Japan. Mm-hmm. Also, um, a popular series that me and Mako-chan got into, uh, Alice in Borderland, season two drops next month. And I can't wait for that. Not next month. No, next year. Okay. Next, next year. December. Next December. Whoops. Sorry. I was so hyped about it. Still am. <laughs> it's the way they're staggering all of this stuff, so... This season will star Kento Yamazaki from live action Kingdom Orange and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and Your Lie in April. Uh, I think he played Jotaro in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, you'll be playing the role of Ryohei Arisu. Tile Toshia, who is in uh, live action Veroni Kenshin, Orange Library Wars, and Aizora Yell as Yuzuha Usagi. Shinsuke Sato from live action Bleach in the Kingdom Films, Oblivion Island anime film returns to direct the series. So that's going to be really good. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Now let's talk, um, anime. Okay. Tiger and bunny is getting a long awaited sequel. Um, the first season aired in 2011, but Netflix will be giving you season two, uh, April of 2022. It's going to be 25 episodes, and it's going to be re- the first 13 episodes will be released simultaneously, which is kind of surprise. You know, I used to clown Tiger and Bunny because when it came out at the time, everybody was into it. I'm just like, fuck this series. You know? I haven't watched it, but it's it's definitely a. <sighs> I can definitely see why it's so popular just because it does kind of clown on the fact that everything has to do with, you know, how much money we can get out of them and how much, you know, what brands we can try and um, place somewhere in the product or, you know, it's, it's, it's very much a current issue. Mm. Gotcha. Let's see what else do we have here? Um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure: Stone Ocean hits Netflix next month, December first. Looking forward to all the Jolene cosplays I'm going to be seeing this weekend. Which reminds me, I will have to do Part Six Jotaro as well. And finally, another Kakigurui anime, Kakigurui Twin, premieres on Netflix August 2022. If you like gambling, this one is right up your alley. It's basically a spin-off prequel to the original series. This takes place a year before Yumeiko Jabami arrives at the private academy, Hiyakao uh, Private Academy, where the school hierarchy is determined by gambling. The story focuses on her classmate, Mary Sao Tome. 
That's going to be interesting. Yes, definitely read the manga. It's very good. Uh, Slime Game says, I want to read the manga first. Definitely. If you read the manga, if you watch the anime, check out the live action on Netflix. And I believe there is another season of live action that didn't hit Netflix that I've had to kind of acquire to check it out. So it's really good. Let's see what else do we have here. And that's basically is it. So, all right, Mako. All right, so um, it does look like we are uh, having a little bit of an issue with the Madoka Magica credit card. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for those that don't know what Madoka Magica is, it is a magical girl anime in which a cute little creature called Kyube makes um, contracts with young girls in order to become magical girls. They get one wish. Um, however, Kyube does not tell you exactly what the fallout from that is. Um, so the credit card, how credit cards usually work in Japan, um, they're closer to debit cards mm -hmm. since um, instead of being sent a statement from a credit card company at the end of the month, which you have to pay the standard for Japanese credit cards is for them to automatically and directly deduct the full purchase price from your bank account. Um, so uh, alternatively, you can pay in monthly installments or revolving payment at it as it's called. However, carrying the unpaid balance over to the next month means you'll have to pay interest fees. And so the revolving payment is an option very few Japanese shoppers take or even consider. Um, however, uh, the Madoka Magica card is a little bit different. If you actually sift through the terms and conditions in the contract, um, you'll come to Chapter 2, Payment Article 10, mm. which states the repayment method for purchases or cash withdrawals made with this card will be revolving payment. In other words, if you use the Madoka Magica card thinking it will work almost like every other Japanese credit card, where once the transaction goes through, it's automatically paid off in full from your bank account, you're going to be in for a surprise when you find out you've only paid off a fraction of the purchase price. And you're going to end up paying extra overall because of the interest fees, which works out to 15% a year. I just want you to know, I'm just sitting here laughing. Why? I'm just saying. It, the card basically imitates the fucking anime. I'm just saying, you know. God. It's just a matter of... I'm just surprised normal credit card companies don't have Cube as their mascot. At least you know what the fuck you're getting yourself into. <laughs> God. That, that, I'm just saying that that's wild. Yeah, so, um, basically, uh, though the issue does, um, it does still have a minimum monthly repayment amount aside from interest fees that it automatically pulls from your bank account. So in theory, that should eventually pay off your balance, at which point you'll be free from interest payments. The key word, though, is eventually. For balances of 100,000 yen, which is about $878 or less, the default automatic repayment is just 3,000 yen a month meaning it could take as many as 34 months to pay off. Mm. And that's assuming the card isn't used by anything else in that nearly three-year period. So obviously, online reactions um, from the anime fans have been a little bit shocking. Uh, reminds me of that part in the anime where uh, Sayaka says, why didn't you tell me about that part of the contract? And Kyube says, because you never asked me about it. <laughs> Uh, I can make miracles, magic, and revolving payments happen. 
I don't like this card, but it's very faithful to the source material. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It is worth noting that unlike Kubei, who kept completely silent on the hidden cost of the Magical Girl contract, the Madoka Magica credit card does explain the repayment system before you enter into the financial contract, partially buried in the fine print as that explanation may be. It also looks like it's possible to, on a month-by-month -month basis, adjust your repayment amount so that your balance is paid off before you start incurring interest fees. With almost everyone in Japan accustomed to using their credit cards in an interest fee, one step and done manner, though, the Madoka Magica card's tricky, counterintuitive nature seems like exactly the kind of deal Kyubei would offer. So if you do sign up for it, use it with care. And I see Debiri says, I wish it were spoken by Kyubei. Just imagine calling a credit card company, you know, to dispute something, and it's Cuba on the other side. I think at that point, I would just be like, you know, I'm just going to take the, I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to dispute. I'll just pay it and just hang the phone up because I know exactly what I'm going to be dealing with. I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah, I, I would just hang up at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is me. <laughs> I, I, I might actually, you know, sign that contract. <laughs> you gambler, you. What? All I gotta do is get enough witches in order to clear out my gem. So what if I, you know, end up killing a bunch of my friends because they got turned into witches? But here's the million dollar question, though. Hmm. Huh? Were they really your friends? I don't know, because um, sometimes, I guess, they fought against one another. There you go. <laughs> but, I mean, they, they fought for territory because they knew that if they didn't kill witches to clear their gems, they would turn into a witch. So, um, I just got to be the bigger, badder bitch in this. Sorry, guys. As the saying goes, kill witches, get bitches. <laughs> Annie up, Madoka. <laughs> anyway. All right. What's going on with uh, Jump Fest? Yeah, so we got a couple of uh, convention updates. So Jump Festa 2022 revealed that it's actually going to be a hybrid event. Um, so that will actually be... Come on. Load. Load, damn it. Um, so that is actually going to end up being a virtual and in-person Mm. um event which you know not for nothing uh i think a lot of places should start doing this uh just because you know who the hell wants to go and hang out with a bunch of people true i mean i i do enjoy you know seeing the cosplay and stuff like that but if i can watch all the panels on my tv then I can do that in the hotel room and then just sit outside of the hotel and watch people. You have this thing for people watching. I enjoy people watching. I enjoy watching cosplayers. I enjoy just watching people randomly walking down the streets. Um, that's my one joy in having to go to the mall mm. because, you know, shopping is not my thing. I just enjoy watching people. And it's, I guess, the psych major in me trying to figure people out and why they're doing what they're doing and where they're shopping and what they're wearing. And it's it's enjoyable and relaxing to me. Sounds good. But yes. So anyway, um, so the Jump Festa app will be updated with a new iteration of the virtual island called Janfest Island, where app users will take control of an avatar to visit various virtual exhibits and installations. The island will also operate with a scavenger hunt game where virtual attendees will collect 22 unique virtual coins featuring the most popular jump magazines and characters, which can be redeemed through the virtual events capsule character tower for new characters to collect the highlight of the virtual event will be a new virtual art exhibit called the jump original art museum 
where 130 high-resolution images of original art from some of Jump's most popular authors Mm. with signatures will be available to look through and examine. Finally, the Zablack Digital Bookstore, powered by Shiesha, will be featured in the virtual event through a dedicated library link to an external site where 33 selected magazines, along with the September 2021 issue of the recently revived Psycho Jump anthology, will be made available to virtual attendees for free reading. Mm. In-person tickets will go on sale starting November 15th for the in-person event being held at the Makuhari Mesa, while the Jump Festa merchandise store will open for attendees browsing on November 19th, with Jump Festa merchandise orders being accepted from November 19th. In-person events and recorded segments will also be streamed via the official Jump YouTube channel and the Jump Festa Navi app and website along with the Jump Festa app for attendees. Just imagine you turn on Navi app. It goes, hey, listen. I actually actually had that as my uh, sound for my messages on my phone Mm -hmm. for quite a while. Um, Probably a good uh, three or four years back. And then switched it off because, you know, after a while, Navi gets a little repetitive Mm -hmm. and you just kind of want to strangle her. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so my cousin thought it would be hilarious to change her message prompt to Navi. And every time her freaking message prompt, and this is four years ago now. Mm. So every time now her message prompt goes off, um, and she switched it about six months ago, I was looking at my phone. (laughs) And last but not least in the, uh, Convention updates. Comic Hit 99 is going to require proof of COVID-19 vaccination Mm -hmm. or negative test. So the event is currently scheduled for December 30th and 31st. Um, It was released by the Comet Market Preparatory Committee that's um, part of their COVID-19 entry measures and how to get tickets um, will include that visitors will either need to show their COVID-19 vaccination certificate um, that has been given to them when they got their vaccinations or provide a negative test, though the event will release more information on the testing certificate requirements at a later time. Um, Comiquette has previously asked those who want to attend to get vaccinated. Currently in Japan, Uh, The tests can be hard to come by and can range from being mildly expensive to outrageously so, depending on circumstances and time frames. This is changing in the new year with the Japanese government providing free testing in March, but that's not in time for Comicat. Those who have supplied their vaccination status will be given a wristband with their temperature on it and vaccination status. The cap for each day of Comicat also is going to be 55,000 people, which is well below the 750,000 people wow. that went to the comic two years ago. Uh, they plan to sell general attendance tickets outright before the event, but if sales reach over the 55,000 mark, and it is expected they will, the draw will go to a lottery. An early admission ticket will also become available at some point, letting people into the halls earlier than the general admission. Cosplayers will be able to purchase a separate ticket for entry into the changing rooms. Tickets are also going to be split between the dojin halls and the corporate booths with limited movement between them. Comiquette notes that tickets will be supplied on an area-by-area basis and that movement may occur between them during the day, depending on the level of people in the areas. Mm. There will be no on-the-day ticket sales. Makes sense. So, yeah, I mean, they're taking this very seriously, which is awesome, Mm -hmm. because Japan really hadn't been taking the uh, situation with COVID seriously at all. Um, But it is nice to see that they are, one, finally, that their numbers are coming down, and two, that they're actually, you know, trying to take into account that, hey, you know, we're losing a crap ton of money because all the borders are still closed. Mm -hmm. 
and all those weebs that bought cheap 200 uh, round trip tickets to Japan. Mm. Which are well, I mean, non They ended up losing a lot of money because of the Olympics. Well, yeah. And I, I mean a butt ton of money. These people were expecting for years and years that the money that they spent on the games would be at least partially coming back to them right. by fan tickets and people coming in um, for the event and being touristy and all of that. Even the, you know, the athletes themselves couldn't do their touristy stuff. So Japan is hemorrhaging money at this point. So to try and get anything working, you're going to have to be stuck with something like this, mm. where they're going to be very strict with their numbers. They're going to be very strict with their policies. And it's all to attempt to get back to where they were so that everybody can start making money again. I get that. And, you know, and you know what, you know, honestly... The fact that Winter Comic Cat is the last two days of the year reminds me of how SDCC is over Thanksgiving weekend, and I'm just like, but why? And and I know we have discussed this on the show previously, and I get it, and I understand it, but I just feel, you know, there shouldn't be some type of convention or anything around a freaking holiday. That that That's just me. I mean, I, I somewhat agree with you, mm -hmm. but at the same time, these conventions are going to take what they can get at this point. True. And yeah. having something on a weekend like this means that there's a better chance of people being able to go because they don't have to really take off because it is a holiday weekend. True. So they do just get to, you know pay for tickets and go. And as uh, Bob Coffey is saying that it's hard to get tickets for, for SDCC period. But um, in regards to that, we want to tell you about the uh, Gundam based pop-up installation at SDCC. For those of you who don't know, the Gundam base is a specialty store for Gunpla and other Gundam merchandise. It first opened up in Tokyo in 2017, and now it's finally set to land in the U.S. for its first ever pop-up installation outside of Asia. The closest that we have to something like that is Gundam Planet out in Jersey, which is really awesome. Mm -hmm. But the pop-up store will debut at SDCC November 26th to the 28th. So that's going to be pretty cool. The store will have over 150 items, including Comic-Con exclusives and other items that are only sold at the Gundam-based stores or the Gundam factory in Yokohama. It will be open during normal show hours and is located at booth 1805. SDC's international event will be held in person next weekend at the San Diego Convention Center. It will be called Comic-Con Special Edition. I'm surprised uh, Reed popped in go after them for that name. This year's physical event in July was canceled due to the uh, COVID-19 situation and was replaced by a three-day Comic-Con at home virtual event. Last year's event was also canceled due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So, and Gundam Base has stores in Tokyo, Fukuoka, Nagoya, Kyoto, and Shanghai. Cool. Speaking of Gundam, there is a metal Gundam Epion on the premium Bandai store, and I want it. Who piloted Epion? Sex. Ah, Sex Marquise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sexy, sexy. Did, did he or did he not have the wild turkey at the time, though? No, no, that was much later. <laughs> That that was that was after the uh, zero system fucked him up. <laughs> well, we'll have to give him another a fresh bottle and some corn. Oh dear God! <laughs> <laughs> Behold. Side note: um, In one of the Ron one half group side, man, one of the guys, his last name is Corns. So we. So we kind of mess with him, like, 
There is a meme that says, I like Korm, and I posted that just to mess with his head. So, you know, Jeez. It, it, it's 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 kind of funny. Right now in the group, it, it, they're running a storyline where, you know, Moose knocked the Pecane and Ronma and Ryoga are fucking each other's brains out. It, it's kind of chaotic in there. I'm just sitting there watching all of this. I'm like, y'all need Jesus. Truly, truly do. But Jesus is probably watching with the popcorn and be like, nah, man, well, this is good. <laughs> Anywho. Let's see. Okay. Um, I, I'll take, this, take one. this one and then I'll take the last yeah. one. Yeah. Because I am a fan of Demon Slayer and I'm also a fan of Lisa. She is a talented artist. So the opening theme to uh, Demon Slayer Mugen Train uh, arc Hits 1 million views in one day. That's just wow. But as reported, the official YouTube channel for any song singer Lisa posted a full music video for Akiboshi, which is the opening theme for season two of Demon Slayer, better known as Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba Mugen Train Arc, at midnight on November 8th, uh, Japanese Standard Time. And within a day, it hit 1 million views. As the time of the article that we're discussing came out, the video directed by Masakazu Fukats has already been viewed more than 1.4 million times. Lisa wrote on Twitter yesterday, 1 million. The power of everyone is amazing. Thank you. It's about a week away from the release. I should go over and see what the numbers are up to, you know. Akiboshi will be included in her double A side 20th single, which is Akiboshi Shirogane, to be released on November 17th, tomorrow. Shirogane has been used as, the th as Demon Slayer's ending theme ahead of the CD release in Japan. Akaboshi was already released digitally on October 18th and has dominated Otakon's digital single charts for two consecutive weeks. Wow. Th that's, that, 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 that's, wow. Let me see if I can see it. Watch on YouTube. As of right now, this video has 3,469,722 views. Sheesh. Yeah. I'm definitely going to have to give this track a listen to after the show tonight. And no, I have not even watched, started watching season two yet. I haven't even watched a movie. I am so far behind on my anime. Thank God some of the shows I'm watching is having their fall finale so I can jump on that. So. <sighs> wow. Now, Mako Chan, what is going on with these unauthorized cakes? Yeah, so uh, police department in Japan charged a woman on Tuesday for breaking copyright law by selling unauthorized cakes based on Demon Slayer. Mm. The woman sold cakes uh, anywhere between 13,000 to 15,000 yen, which is about 113, $114 to about $130. Uh, she sold them on Instagram and has made since July of 2019, about 6.5 million yen, which is about fifty-six, fifty-seven thousand dollars $57,000. The woman admitted to the charge, saying that she believed the cakes would sell well with popular anime characters and that she knew this was a crime. Customers submitted their desired image when ordering cakes. A production company noticed her cakes on Instagram in February and consulted the police. Um, yeah, so Japan really, really, really takes their copyright law seriously. Mm -hmm. Um, that somebody that is making cakes basically out of their home and selling on Instagram um, can be hit with lawsuits because of the characters they happen to put on those cakes. Yep. That shit kind of makes you think about cosplayers here who are screaming that, oh, the cosplay is mine. I made it. Yes, the cosplay is yours. But the character you're cosplaying isn't yours. 
And I imagine oh, they go- and they, they actually have an update at the bottom of this. Um, the reason for this is because there is a bakery called Workshop Pre-Roll mm-hmm. that actually received official license to bake Demon Slayer cakes. Makes sense. But I have to admit, her cakes do look nice, though. Yeah, I'm looking at the one that got the official stuff, and basically the entire... Uh, the entirety of the official cake is nothing more than screen printing on cakes. Really? That's all it is. It's a regular cake, and the top of it happens to have a screen printed picture of the characters on it. Get the fuck out of here. Whereas this woman actually did more 3D type of things. It still has the screen printing, but the screen printed characters are cut out with, you know, various uh, things to make it look a lot better. Um, So it sounds to me like uh, somebody was a little bit pissed off that their cakes were uh, (laughs) so much prettier. Mm -hmm. And comparing the prices, I mean... Yeah, she was charging at least double the amount, but look at how they are, though. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I'd pay that type of money, you know. It's... it. This woman's cakes are like, if you go to a cosplayer, a commissioner to make your cosplay, you're going to pay out, but it's going to look good on you. Yeah, it's the difference between getting something manufactured mm -hmm. from China and getting something uh, uh, correctly suited for yourself. Yeah, this is like buying something from Mick Costumes. Yeah, it'll fit you, but after maybe after the next convention, it's just going to fall apart on you. Anywho, enough about that. We're at the part of the show that y'all really stick around for. Uh, meanwhile, in Japan, let's see, what do we have here? We get through this stuff really quickly when there's only two of us. Yeah, that's true. But not for nothing, it means I can go to sleep earlier. Well, that is true. <laughs> and I am kind, and for some reason, I am kind of hungry, and I'm just like. Do I want to eat more leftovers or actually I think I have a thing of microwave popcorn I can pop and eat that and go to bed. I think I'll do that instead. All right. So I'll take the first story. Okay. Um, I will take the second one. Really? I thought you would have taken the last one. No. Well, the second one is, um, yeah, it, it goes with stuff we've already been talking about. So. True. Okay. All right. So get this: a train a train driver sues Japan Rail over fifty six yen for a one minute delay. <sighs> Japanese trains are widely praised for their punctuality, but this precise to the minute timekeeping is at the center of a dispute between a train driver and West Japan Railway Company. According to the reports, the male driver who works for the Okayama branch of JR West is seeking payment of 56 yen, which translates to 49 cents, and unpaid wages after a mishap that occurred during his shift on June 18th last year. The driver says he was scheduled to deadhead an empty train at the Okayama Station Depot that morning and was waiting at one of the station platforms for the train to arrive. When the train arrived, he realized he was waiting at the wrong platform, and by the time he met the driver at the correct platform, the start of the transfer between drivers was delayed by two minutes, leading to a one-minute delay in departure and a one-minute delay in warehousing the train at the depot. Hmm. As a result, J.R. West deducted 85 yen from the driver's July paycheck, saying there was no actual labor performed during the two minutes when the transfer had happened. However, after the driver brought to the matter to the Okayama Labor Standards Inspection Office, J.R. West eventually reduced the delay time to one minute upon the advice from the Labor Bureau. Still believing this was unreasonable due to the fact that the error caused no damage to the company and no disruption to train timetables as the train was empty, the driver decided to take the matter to the Okayama District Court in March. The driver is now seeking compensation of 43 yen, which was deducted from the one-minute delay, which was 13 yen, 
in overtime created by the delay at 2.2 million yen, which is $19,407 for mental anguish. When the driver believes his pay shouldn't be docked as the incident occurred during his work shift, the company says it applied the no work, no pay principle as a reason for the wage cut. In the same way, they would case late cases of late arrival to work or absenteeism. Wow. The driver, the driver criticized the company for using wage cuts as sanctions for human error, saying a small mistake in business shouldn't be classified as a breach of contract. And netizens basically agreed with the guy. If the company is right, then why were they advised to rescind on the initial two minutes by the Labor Bureau? Everyone makes mistakes. Wage cuts shouldn't be made unless it's a big deal. If this becomes normal, wage cuts due to mistakes will spread out to other industries as well. So you can reduce someone's salary by one minute, but you can't pay overtime in one minute increments as well. I would go crazy if I was in charge of payroll, having to deduct minutes from people's salary for every mistake they make. Despite the public siding with the employee during the ongoing case, Japan Rail's stellar record of punctuality and safety presents a strong argument for enforcing time to the exact minute. Plus, human error can result in severe consequences when you're part of a team that's responsible for the safety and welfare of millions of passengers every day. However, with increasing safety concerns on board Japanese trains, rail staff are now under more strain than ever as employees may need to rethink the way they provide support to their employees. But as we all know, a great employer in Japan isn't always easy to find. Well now. I don't know. I mean, it kind of reminds me of something I bought from Amazon. I went to ship it back. From, I put in whatever reason. I was docked like 70 cents. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm not even going to fight this 70 fucking cents. Just, I just want it out by house. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to sit there and argue over 50 cents out of my check. I'm just like, it's 50 freaking cents. I mean, I can sort of understand yeah. if it wasn't my fault that I'm losing 50 cents. True. But, I mean, we understand that Japan is very, very strict with all of this crap. Mm-hmm. Um, so we take it for granted that, yes, they're just very strict and we don't understand. But, I mean, it is it is a little weird to think about something like that. Yep. You know, oh, there was a minute delay, and because nobody was working during that minute, we're docking you 50 cents. If if somebody came up to me and said, you know, oh, um, you spent, fi- you, you spent uh, a minute longer in the bathroom than you needed to, so we're going to dock you 50 cents, um, I think I would walk out. Let me tell you something. If my current job was like, we're going to just pay you based on the work that you do. My, I, I would probably quit within a week because I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, nah, this ain't going to work. Yeah. I mean, it, it's different. You know, I'm not working for commissions. Um, give me my hourly pay. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And now you can go away. Salud. All right. And what else do we have here? Uh, so sticking with trains, Choo-choo. um, yeah, so uh, the Shinkansen is the crown jewel of Japan's transportation network, whisking passengers across the country at high speeds with amazing punctuality. However, for the second time in a week, Japan's bullet trains have suffered a black eye, this time by way of a literal whack on the head. On the morning of November 9th, a 69-year-old resident of Tokyo was on board the Nozomi Shinkansen that runs from Tokyo to Fukuoka. According to other passengers, the 69-year-old was visibly drunk and not in either a jovial or sleepy way. While on board the train, he was seen bumping into a female passenger and heard angrily accosting other male passengers with what are you a woman or something then at some point after the train pulled out of the station the man took out his phone and used it to hit another passenger a 53 year old man over the head reports refer to the weapon as a Denwa, a term that's often used to describe flip phones 
as opposed to smartphones, suggesting that in addition to being a lush and a jerk, this guy was also a uh, ludite. What about Gibbs? Yeah. Um, the incident took place at around 8 a.m., so this guy was drunk at 8 a.m. And considering that it takes about an hour from Hachoch- Hachoji to the closest station where one can transfer to the Shinkansen, it seems like the man either got a very early start drinking that day or was hopping on the train after an all-night binge. Mm. Either way, his bender came to an end when the train made an unscheduled stop um, and uh, police officers could board the train, arrest him for assault, and take him into custody at 8, 10, 8.12 a.m. So within 12 minutes, the train was stopped. He was escorted off of the train and arrested. Meanwhile, on the MTA trains, if there's somebody crazy on there, you might not get that. The cops won't show up to like maybe 10 stops down the line, if that. Yeah, the only thing you can do is basically switch cars if you can. Exactly. And hope that there isn't, you know, a sleeping bum in that one. Look, a stinky sleeping bum at that. Look, last week I was coming back from the store and there was, this, I get on, there was a dude, crazy dude, just sitting there smoking crack on, 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 the, on the subway car. And just oh talking, about, kid, talking about he's going to fuck somebody. I'm just like, man, I'm like, I just need to make it four stops. I'm not trying to fight nobody. And I remember one time I was going to work and I didn't realize it. I, there was an, a car that was empty and I jumped right, I walked right in. Yeah, that smell hit me like as soon as I walked in and I was just like, fuck. <laughs> Thankfully, I was able, at the next stop, I jumped right off and went into the next stop because that's the type of stench that gets in your clothes, you know? Yeah. And the thing is, yeah. there was actual people. In that car, I'm just like, the fuck is wrong with y'all? Hey, some people are nose blind. That sucks for the people around them, but some people are nose blind. I mean, when you live with 22 cats and have two litter boxes, yeah, you, you can kind of get nose blind. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we wrap up the show? Yeah. Okay. And I'm looking at my stats here, and it looks like I dropped one percent of frames while streaming. I got I got to tweak the video card and see what's going on. Any oops? Eh, I don't think it's that big of an issue. I dropped down the uh, the frame rate from sixty to thirty, so that should that should help. But I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. I mean. I'm on fiber. What I mean, what more can you do unless there's other shit running in the background? But you know, mm-hmm. I, well, like I said, I am going to update this machine like next year anyway. So you know, but enough about that. If you like the show, tell a friend. They in turn will tell another friend, and so on and so forth. We're independent bloggers, independent podcasters. We do this for the fun of it. So what we tell you that we like and don't like. We legitimately mean that. So if you have any questions about the show, drop us a line at podcast at animejamsession.com. Again, that is podcast at animejamsession.com. We're here to believe you. And don't forget to visit our website at animejamsession.com where you will find links to our cosplay videos and and convention videos, links to our cosplay photos, anime reviews, convention reports, Cosplay tips and tricks, cosplayer interviews, editorials, so much more at AnimeJamSession.com. And don't forget to check out um, if you have like Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, any type of podcasting app. You can open it up, search Anime Jam Session, and check out this week's episode, prior week's episodes, and all of that. Over 500 episodes going back like, almost 10 years. Wow. Let's see what else we have here. And don't forget to follow us on our social medias, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. It's all Anime Jam Session. Please follow us on our social media so you know when when you're when we go live, when new articles go up, cosplay videos, 
convention videos, cosplay photos, and so much more. And don't forget down below is our tip jar. There's a link to our Streamlabs. Click on that. Throw us a few bucks if you like. There's a link to our Ko-Fi. Throw us a few bucks there as well. Um, Bits, cheer us on. We really appreciate that. And auto hosting, which is no longer a thing, but if you hop onto Twitch and we see that we're live, host us. We greatly appreciate that. So now we're going to go around the room for last words. So last words, Mako Chan. I am uh, one looking forward to sleeping because mm. yay sleep. Um, but two, I-, I get a new kitty soon. Oh Lord. I'm so excited. My last words is, I think I want some ice cream. I'm thinking of the spoon at the last that's in the fr- in the freezer, and that's basically it. I'm just gonna edit everything, just call it a night and all that good stuff. So, ice cream and popcorn? Sure, why not? Okay. the The bucket of ice cream in the fridge only has like two spoonfuls left. Ah, uh. yeah. So that is it. End of list. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. I will be bringing you our uh, convention, our anime NYC convention report. Also, this week and over the next few weeks, PoochieCon, AAC, and DerpyCon convention reports will be going up on our site at Anime Jam Session. All right, I'm Ranma, and I am Mako Chan. Great fight, great night. See you next week. Night. Say goodnight, Mako-chan. Goodnight, Mako-chan. Perfect. Awesome. That is it. We are out of here. See you all next week. This podcast has been a production of Anime Jam Session and AJS Productions. No fanboys and fangirls were hurt, maimed, shot, electrocuted, or pistol whipped in this episode. For now. The views, opinions, and thoughts expressioned on the show do not reflect the staff or the network as a whole. But we're still right, damn it! For transcripts of this episode, start typing. Check us out at AnimeJamSession.com and vognetwork.com for more information about us and other programming. Jamatane!